In this video, we are going to use this use case in our Blazor application. And to do that, we are also going to use dependency injection. For that, first of all, we will need to create an interface for this use case. So I'm going to do a control dot on here and I'm going to select the first one, extract interface and click on OK. So automatically Visual Studio does the work for me. So it created this interface right here. Now for file organization purpose, I'm going to create a folder so that I can put all of the interfaces inside this folder because I know that under inventories folder, I'm going to have other use cases. Now that I have the interface for the use case, I can again go to the program.cs file and I can do a dependency injection. And this time, instead of using singleton, I'm going to use transit. As I said, later I'm going to have a lecture that talks about dependency injection by itself. So again, I'm going to have a mapping between the abstraction and the concrete implementation. I'm going to do a control dot so that I can import the namespace. Now that I have added this mapping to our service collection, I can require the use case in the Blazor components. Before I go ahead and create uh, different components, we can use a, the index page. And I'm going to uh, change the title to test page. So I'm going to use this page to display some of the existing inventories that we hard coded in the in-memory data store. In order to use the use case, I'm going to come over here and do a as sign. So this is a page directive that tells the framework that I am injecting the use case in here. I'm injecting a instance of the concrete implementation of this abstraction, right? The abstraction that are represented by this interface and I call it view inventories by name use case. And then I can come over here and add a code block. So this is where the logic goes in a Razor component, which is the, the Blazor component. Microsoft calls all of the Blazor component Razor component. So Blazor component or Razor component, they refer to the same thing, which is this type of component that we are coding with. So within the code block, that's all of the logic goes. First of all, we will need a list of inventory. Uh, this is a variable that will store the inventories that we have. And again, in .NET 6, you will have this uh, green squiggly line that is uh, warning you that this is a non-nullable reference type. So you have to assign something to it to initialize it. Otherwise, it's going to warn you. Right? So by doing this, we are avoiding having no reference exception. Now, for single page applications, all of the components has state, right? So this is not stateless. This is stateful. Uh, that's why we are going to have a sequence of different events hooks that are triggered through the life cycles of a component. One of the first ones that are triggered is called uninitialized. And that's where we are going to use our use case to retrieve the inventories. So I'm going to do overwrite. And then you can see that we have this on initialize async. Because our first use case is using the async method, that's why I'm overriding the async version of the on initialize band. Then over here, I can uh, use this variable here and then I can do dot uh, execute async. Right, so if I don't pass in anything for the name, then it will return all of the four existing inventories for me. Right, I can make this an async and then uh, I can assign the result to the inventories method by putting a wait here. Now it's still warning me because um, it's a, a returning i enumerable, whereas we are having a list here. So I'm going to do a to list. And that should get rid of the red squiggly line here. Now it's gone. Okay, so we have the inventories assigned to the inventories variable. Then we can use the inventories uh, variable inside our HTML section, right? So all of these above the code block uh, is inside our HTML section, right? And everything below is our code block. 
when we want to represent the data in any way, we can write HTML in here. What we can do is we can add a an ordered list, and then we can make each inventory name displayed in the list item. How do we do that? Right. So we can use a loop, which uh, we can utilize uh, something that is called razor syntax, which is a mix between C sharp and HTML. So if you're familiar with C sharp, and if you want to manipulate uh, the look and view, then you can use the razor syntax as opposed to JavaScript. So we can do add for each. Uh, the add sign is telling the compiler that as a developer, I'm writing C sharp as opposed to HTML. Right, so I can write regular C sharp uh, for each inventory in the inventory list. And with the curly braces, I can put the list item in there. One thing here, the curly braces, you will have to write it. it. Just because there's only one line underneath the for each, it doesn't mean that you can omit the curly braces. Without the curly braces, it will not work. Basically, for any places that requires curly braces, for example, for each, for or if statement, you will need curly braces, right? For here, uh, we have a list item. So we will need to display the inventory name. One other thing you will have to know is that once you have the S sign, it tells the compiler that you are writing C sharp, right? Once the compiler encounters HTML element, then it breaks the flow of C sharp. So here you cannot just say I and V to represent the inventory variable here. It will consider this as a plain text. So because the flow of C sharp is broken, in order to still write C sharp, you have to also add a at sign here. Now uh, the compiler considers that this I and V as a variable uh, that is defined over here. I can just put inventory name here. Now we should see a list of all of the inventories uh, under here. So in order to make it look better, I added a line break here. And now we can give it a test. So I'm going to click on start without debugging. And you can see we have all of our four inventories displayed on the index page. So what if we only search, for example, one of them, right? We can do some testing here, make sure everything works fine, right? So this a purple squiggly line is basically saying I updated the code, so I will have to rebuild it. So I click on this, it will say rebuild and apply changes. Now the code is reflected and I can only see bike body. And what if I put something that doesn't exist, for example, Apple, right? And again, you can see that it's not crashing. It's just not displaying anything, which is expected. Although Apple doesn't exist, I enumerable inventory here is not now. So the to list will not throw exception. Uh, it's just a empty list. So this is what I wanted to show you in this video uh, regarding how to use our use case inside our Blazor component. I also introduced uh, the razor syntax to you a little bit. We will continue in the next video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the QA area. If not, I'll see you in the next video.